Hello everyone, I think now is a good time to start. Uh, my name is Urvashi Agrawal and I would like to welcome you all to Legal Operations Simplified. I hope we are able to answer all your questions that you have about how technology can be a game changer for uh, corporate legal teams. Uh, now before we begin, I would like to request you all to keep your mics on mute so that we can have a easy session around without any problem for anybody. And if you have any questions during the session, please leave them in the chat. Our resource persons will take all the questions once they are done answering the ones that you have sent in already through the Google Forms. On that note, I would like to thank you all for sending more than 100 questions. But obviously, it is not possible to take up 100 questions during one hour session. So what we have done is that we have shortlisted a few questions. We have tried to cover as many uh, aspects of legal operations as possible. And I hope it will be a, an enriching session for all of us. And of course, after that, if any topic remains and you have questions, then please free, feel free to uh, ask your questions in the chat to our resource persons after the session, after this uh, Google questions are answered. So now I would like to introduce our uh, persons, Ms. Uh, Mr. Abhay Kapkoti and Ms. Ashna Chabra. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining. Yeah, so both Abhay and Ashna have more than 10 years of combined experience in this field and I hope they'll be able to answer all your questions. So let's begin. And Ashna, I think we couldn't have a better question to begin our session with. Somebody has simply said that they are excited to know about how technology can help corporate legal teams. So can you please throw some light on this? Definitely. So uh, when we saw, uh, talk about technology, I think that uh, it has taken over our lives uh, from getting up in the morning uh, to sleeping. We are all attached to our phones primarily. And then, of course, we have the corporate uh, where we are sticking up to the laptops and systems. But uh, when I talk about uh, legal operations specifically, then technology can uh, help us in great ways. I mean, it helps us in co co uh, coordination and collaboration with our team members, which makes life very easy. After the pandemic, we have seen the importance of coordination. Uh, it helps, uh, it brings, every, uh, makes everything mobile. Anyone sitting from anywhere in the world at any given point of time can connect with their team members. And then when I uh, speak about legal operations, it's just not day-to-day uh, -day litigation manage, uh, matters that a legal uh, counsel might be dealing with, but it can be notices. It can be the statutory compliances of the company. It can be contracts. Uh, and it can be, you know, legal research for that matter. So there are so many things that one has to manage. Having a management tool in place specifically for these tasks helps in great extent. You can get everything in one single platform. You can get everything. Uh, you can uh, create actionable insights from your central repository. So you don't have to go anywhere, but just one platform with all your answers to the legal operations. So I think it brings a great deal of advantage from, uh, you know, uh, small, even starting from very small activities like uh, having a request form for your legal service request to the closing, even the expense and invoice management can be performed with just one platform. So it has made life that easy. Okay, Ashna, I think that uh, is a very good introduction for how we can get help for, uh, by using uh, technology in our day-to-day -day legal operations. Uh, my next question is for you, Abhay. Uh, somebody has sent that we hear about all these fancy tools. However, won't it require any technical know-how? Will my team be able to adapt to it? Yeah, that's a very relevant question. But what I have seen in my seven years of experience in the legal tech industry, the adaption towards a new technology, the resistance that comes now, it comes from the higher up. So the seniors who are more used to the tradition, who are more used to how things were. So they are the main roadblocks when it comes to the users to taking new technologies, but users are much more, they swim in this water, okay? So they have been brought up with smartphones, iPhones, they download new apps every day. So they are much more accustomed to taking on new technologies. 
but when you are taking a new technology something you have to keep in mind like whenever the heavy lifting should be done by the software itself okay so the user should not be trained again and again because that they find redundant they are not able to see the productivity gains that are gained through this particular system so whenever you are onboarding something make sure that you have a good trial version you have seen the demo of the particular product and you are able to see that this particular product, any person who might be sitting in some remote area with limited internet access should be able to use and is able to do the basic tasks like uh, communications, matter management. So that is something that you have to take in mind. And of course, that mental shift has to be there. So like uh, if this, if you get this kind of a dashboard, uh, from there you can see like, this add a matter is available like a shortcut menu. There is no thinking about it. Like if somebody wants to send a communication, they can send this communication, which matter this pertains to who are the members that it wants to send. So this is the kind of intuitive uh, thinking or that should be in the product so that everybody is able to use it seamlessly. It should be, I think, more of a plug and play kind of a thing where, right, like right, you right. mentioned, heavy yes. lifting has to be done by the software and software making it very easy to adapt. Right, right. So there should not ideally be some adaptability. They yes. should just move from what they are using. They should seamless be transition. seamless transition as the word. Very uh, well said, Abhay. Uh, Ashna now have a question that, uh, as you know, we sent out a mail asking people to register for the event, which whoever is interested. So our mail mentioned that technology can help the teams in managing legal service requests. However, somebody wants to know that what exactly does a legal service request mean? Okay, so let me answer this in a very layman language that when I talk about legal service requests, it's nothing but in a company there are various departments. There is finance, tax, admin, HR, business department, apart from legal that are operating. Now, uh, in their day-to-day -day activities, they might uh, come across a client or a query or a form that requires legal advice or that requires the interference of the legal team. So in a very unstructured company, any person can just walk up to the legal uh, team and uh, ask them the query. But we would uh, uh, this is not uh, suggested and a very uh, appropriate way to go for as it make it, it becomes very chaotic. You cannot track anything. Better thing would be having a platform in place they, which can take all your requests in a very systematic order. You know from which departments most of your requests are coming from, how long uh, or how what, what is the time that is taken by the legal team to resolve these queries. And at the same time, it gives you, it, it lets you know which are the departments that are most exposed towards legal risk. So it helps you def, uh, get some actionable insights that where are the most... Uh, and then, of course, as and how you resolve them, you get you get a clear picture on which uh, department has to be, you know, looked after the most. If I can say that. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Ashna. Right. Um, as Ashna said, na, just adding to her, like a legal team often is the focal point of what everything is happening. Suppose a sales team wants to uh, have a new contract with some other multinational company. So there, are, there is a contract involved. They are sending work to them. Suppose some hiring is going on, some HR agreement needs to be updated. They are sending work to it. So the legal team does not have like, it is getting work from everywhere. And at the end of the year, it, it wants to show through the higher management that this is what we did. So they have like just some mails or they have just some few lines. So if they have a request management portal, they'll be able to see like, these are the requests that we dealt with this way. These are the sales departments or whichever departments have contributed to these kind of requests and which is the department which is making most of these requests so that you have a strategy in the coming year to take that forward. What are the different queries that were received before taking any request? Now, this is essential. Like uh, right now, we are taking anything that comes to the legal department. They are taking it on priority basis or wh whatever uh, mechanism there is. But if a proper review is to be done, Okay, so whenever some somebody raises a request, we say yeah, it will take us four users. It will take us this many hours to complete this task. It will finally be completed by this day. So if we just simply fill this form also, I think it will add much more insight to what we are already doing. And as a, at the end of it, we'll have also like this is what we thought this, this will count. And at the end of it, we have something to review. 
Okay, so uh, some kind of a request management form would be ideal for any corporate at this point in time. Okay, okay great. Uh, since you are uh, already on this topic, our next question is, uh, Abhay, for you, mm -hmm. can a tool help me with managing my company's litigation? Yeah, litigation is probably the, whenever we talk to a corporate and who have like more than a handful cases, this is probably their most pain area because somebody say I'm in uh, my head office is in Chennai. Somebody in Kolkata registers, go to a consumer forum, files a complaint against me. Now this becomes a case. Okay. So I have to send somebody or I have to find somebody in Kolkata. They have to be monitored, like whether the case is being attended to, what is happening, what is the next hearing date, uh, if, is, if any ex party order has been issued against me or not. So this is a major pain point because the government infrastructure is also like that where there are number of sites you have to go to them, probably they are working, they are not working. So once you have one portal where you can get to like in any case, like a consumer forum, tribunals, district court, high courts, you just go to one website and you see a dashboard for all cases. This is God's sake for a legal manager. Okay. So all my litigation, I can see in one place, whatever status is going on. If my junior has updated some matter description, I'm not aware of this. I can just read a summary. I'll be able to make out what uh, subject this deals with. What is the next hearing date? Now, the beauty of this is the next hearing date gets automatically updated. Nobody is manually going to the site and updating it. Okay. So this happens automatically. Whenever this gets updated, it will automatically populate here. Uh, each apart from the matter, there will be like a documents task with litigations comes documents, whether these be judgments, whether these be orders or whether these be simple writs that you're working on. So all those can also be a part of it. So anybody who is interested in this can yeah, find the relevant documents from here. Uh, court hearing again, as we discussed, the next hearing can be seen from here. This is like the list of the orders also. So these are, again, these are automatically getting fetched from the court side. So that can also be seen at one place. So this is like a kind of a tool that you might imagine where you uh, have an active litigation going on. This is something that you would want. Uh, there should be alerts when, uh, should we get triggered whenever the next hearing is uh, done or like a, when some, somebody assigns somebody a task. Or in terms of communication, also when there is a lot of communication also happening between uh, two or three users, they can that can also be a part of it, like what was happening here and that kind of communication expenses also. So right from the matter gets listed till the matter gets disposed, whatever happens, happens in my one dashboard, all my counsels, all my internal team members, anybody related to this case can simply come here they can uh, go to the matter dashboard and they'll be able to find anything so this is uh like any litigation software so this is something that they need to keep an eye for okay that does sound yeah. wonderful for example if i have or uh, 10 matters in 10 different courts of india i don't need to keep visiting 10 different websites every day to see if any update has taken place in my matter or if any order has been uploaded Thank Absolutely. you so much. And at least two or three of them are not working at, at one time when you're searching. <laughs> right. Okay. Ashna, as you also probably have heard that legal teams are considered a heavy cost center in most corporates. Mm -hmm. So uh, the person's question is, won't a tool just be an additional expenditure for the company when we have people doing it, all of this, then uh, getting a tool like this, is it an additional expenditure? What do you think? Okay. So I don't agree with this part that it would be an expenditure reason being. So all the departments apart from business are cost centers to the company. Now the question comes and every company needs the answer to is how to reduce these costs. So when we talk about implementing the management tool, I feel it will help reducing the cost and the cost burden of the company. How? Because it helps minimize the risk. It helps your employees save the time. It gives you an insight on how much time your resources have spent on which activity. It gives you a complete layout on uh, resource management, task management, document management. Uh, for example, if there is a new member joining the team, now it takes him months to read the history, find the mails, read about cases, what, you know, where the company is at currently. But having a management tool gives him access to the central repository 
so that he can uh, have the complete audit trail and history at just one place. And he will, in fact, get on to the team in a, a quicker manner. Similarly, tracking each and every uh, time recording, every case in a very uh, comprehensive tool helps reducing the cost. So I would suggest one should implement these tools and they should then see the difference, uh, how it's helping them reduce the cost. Yeah, so it is uh, more of an investment and less of an expenditure. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Moving on, Abhay, uh, yeah. there's a person who mm -hmm. says that they liaison with many lawyers uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. So even if they take a tool for the internal team, all, all the stakeholders are still not getting involved. Then what is the point? Is it okay? Is it the case that all the stakeholders do not get involved in our legal tool? And um, I would disagree because again, uh, he is partly correct where uh, the outside council is one of the key members of handling any like if it's a litigation matter or suppose it's an advisory matter also there might be some CA that may be involved. So this person is playing a key role in in this particular matter. Okay, so. Oftentimes, this is the main job of a corporate legal team that they hire somebody outside so that and they take an overview from the head office, they'll be taking care of whether this person is doing their job or not, or what is happening there. So bringing the external counsel in within the tool, it's very, very important. And some of the tools have this functionality available, where either they have the counsel portal or they can you can share some documents with them on their mails itself. If you have a counsel portal, you will be able to basically communicate with them. So this is a use case scenario where I was sitting with some bank's uh, legal hand and it was the exact situation that he narrated to me. Suppose uh, there was some discussion between the lawyer and the somebody who used to work there and there was this communication that happened between them now the person left the organization now they were caught in this pickle okay so that person might have said something to them there is no documentary proof because that emails whatever that uh, was sent that were gone so he was like give me a tool where i am able to not just communicate within my organization i can communicate with outside the organization also i can keep a tab on like if some emails or some invoice has to be sent uh, from the council side that can also be sent from the same portal or if i want to keep a track whether this person is appearing or not appearing that can also be taken care of this so if you have one kind of tool that manages that brings in the outside councils for that matter only not for all the matters they bring them in you can share documents with them you can share communication with them so there is no alternate way of communication where it's happening on whatsapp emails phones so everything is happening in line and whenever new person joins in or whenever anybody wants that information they are able to access it see this is how we are doing it here where you can if you want to send some communication they can generally send it from here they can put this subject also you can share various kinds of documents with them and you can also reserve your rights. Suppose it's a confidential document, you just want them to see it or download it or edit it. So based on this, you can give them different kinds of rights also. Similarly for notices, if you are somebody, because as a corporate, I don't send a notice. Somebody from uh, my lawyer will be sending these notices, but I want a place where I can share these notices. I don't want to be the email, okay? So here you can, the council can also see the notices, whatever you have shared, like some kind of a workflow that you can create for your own organization where they can see, where they can click and where they'll then be able to send the notices from the same portal. So this is a kind of place where your council can come in and do the work for you and you are able to monitor this. Does that answer the question? Uh, yes, yes, it does. Uh, I just have one uh, additional, uh, one question in extension to okay. this. Right. Uh, which is that when we are talking of all the stakeholders, mm. so that it means that if I'm getting into an agreement with the party, then mm. all the parties need to sign <laughs> and all. So do these tools allow me to sign documents online, like e-signature and all generally are these available? Right, right. So ideally in a best case scenario there should be uh, in any tool there should be this provision where because a lot of work or digital signature is becoming more and more important yes, more and more right. people are signing things digitally so e mudra is one of those portal that you can use uh, that is a government authenticates 
Okay. It is also available in like in normal portals. Like you can go to digital signature. There are multiple types of digital signature that you can do where you just want to sign your name, where you want to use different kinds of digital signature. So that are also possible through this. Okay, great. Okay. Moving on, Ashna, uh, as you would know that every organization has a different uh, a way of working, different processes, different hierarchies. So uh, are these tools very uh, rigid or are they flexible as per uh, organization's need? Can they be molded as per the company's uh, requirements? And I, think, and I think it's a very valid question because if people are looking to transform, of course, they are looking for flexibility and a right tool should have that flexibility and ease of use so that it can set itself as per the organization rather than organization adapting to it. I mean, that's a plus point of these cloud based pro, uh, platforms that now it has become more of a plug and play. Uh, initially, there was, you know, there was this specific software one needed to install it in their systems, work around it, how it is made. But uh, I feel since the organizations today are so varied, uh, it can uh, be in terms of size or type of organization that they can have hierarchy structure, matrix structure, like uh, some may want the access to the third party, some may want to completely restrict their uh, business activities within the uh, team, uh, within the organization. So the tool should have the flexibility and the ease of use for the users to have their uh, structure inbuilt in the system. And if you're going for a cloud-based or a uh, you know flexible platform, it uh, you will get that feature there. Right, absolutely, Asna. If any good tool, SaaS based tool you are using, there is like you, if your team is of five members today, tomorrow it grows into 50 member team. Yeah. So that 50 members can be accommodated. So you have to always think of scalability. When you are taking software, you just don't have to think like, this is the problem right now. We have 50 notices. Why do we know this? Yeah. But you have to think like, when 55 of these notices will become a matter, what happens then? What happens the next stage? Um, if you don't even take it, you just have to keep that in mind. So with this kind of solution that is available. Okay. Abhay, uh, a couple of questions ago, we talked about how these tools help uh, in managing a company's litigation. Mm -hmm. However, if at all somebody is lucky enough to not have any litigation, so right. do they still have any use of this uh, tools like these? Corporate legal team without any litigation. Right. First of all, we are happy for you, lucky ones that who don't have litigation, but you do have a legal team. Um, because legal teams does multiple things apart from litigation. Okay. So there can be multiple work type. There might be compliance related. There might be negotiations that are going on. There might be agreements that you're working on. So it always makes sense to have a confined space to do your legal work. Like, like a salesperson has a CRM. Okay. Somebody in the HR will have their own kind of a management system. Okay. So legal team also who is doing a specialized work for their own requirement, there should be tools that are focusing on their requirements. Okay. So whether you are, suppose a merger and acquisition is going on, there are two, three members that are part of it. There are somebody from the other side also is a part of that team or somebody like a council is also part of it. Now, where, the, where do these five people meet together? Where do these five people have a collaboration? We say somebody is working from Chennai, somebody is working from Delhi. So there, if there is a confined space, there will be possibility where they can meet, where they can have exchange of ideas, where can, they can work on their own ideas. Uh, like if they have this particular dashboard for their own thing, they can store their documents, they can have collaborations also, where like one person is editing something, the other person is adding something to that point. So once that kind of a mechanism is there, where you can see like what person has vetted what in on a what particular date, there will be different versions that will get created for the same document. So there will be basically on one documents or multiple documents, you are able to work together, you are able to uh, create a kind of a workflow. So like what is to be done, who has to do it, till which date this has to be done. So right now you might be doing it in some Excel sheet or it might be in some folder in some of on-premise software. So that is not going to be sufficing enough because the, the nature of the beast is that it's very complex. Okay. So once you are doing it, there is something that is uh, developed for a legal team to work in collaboration with others. So that can be helpful here in terms of communication also, 
or how much time you are putting in simply just to make yourself like this is how much i worked like i two two hours i drafted a particular thing mm-hmm. nobody will know that if you uh, won't put it in the system mm-hmm. okay uh, so how much hours did it actually took us and how much we had thought that it will take us or something very simple like expenses how much expense we have paid to somebody who is a council member for this case so it always makes sense to have us a particular place to do a particular thing and litigation or apart from the litigation also whatever work that a legal team is doing that is important of course request is another part of it that you can add where people can make a request to you or of course notices also might be like some of the notices that you are receiving no notices also you can manage through this right okay, okay. so to put it in a nutshell even if i don't have a litigation uh, it is very helpful for me to manage my documents my legal service requests etc right okay thank you now we have a very uh, pertinent question here ashna that uh, what happens to the privacy of my data if i store everything on a third party legal tech tool and i think it's a absolutely the most valid question what about data security uh, ever since you know the technology has taken its turn we are all actually worried about our data even we as you know single person users of our mobile phones we are worried about our own data so when we're talking about corporates of course their information is absolutely confidential and when i uh, co- co- talk about corporate legal teams so definitely the most confidential you know uh, uh, aspect of uh, it is covered by the legal teams here so uh, and now we are saying to put all your data on the platform and then work on it so definitely security is an aspect which is of crucial importance so my suggestion would be if you're opting for a cloud based platform where your data is getting stored on the cloud make sure that uh, the platform is set up in a very secured environment make sure that the uh, cloud service provider has the right ip certificates to be able to host that platform uh, along with that certificates uh, they have a right backup policy uh, what if there is a, an out time of that app or what if it uh, you know uh, goes for an upgrade so there should be a backup of all your data right with, within the app then every uh, thing that you put on should be end to end encrypted because why even the webmaster to have your data access so everything should be end to end encryption make sure that they're using the right encryption models as well there is the right audit that's happening so a lot of you know other things that one should be uh, careful of but yes security please uh, you should be careful of while choosing a platform yes. okay ashna uh... now abhay my next question is for you as you uh, showed us the tool so it was able to do a lot of things but this this person here has asked are there any small tools in the market he wants to uh, know if there's any something for uh, managing just the notices okay right by small i think what they actually mean is some specific thing uh, whether they yes, there are tools yes. that are available to deal with the specific issues that come up and uh, it's a very valid questions and this is what we suggest for a big corporation who is thinking to go use the technology because often times people are hesitant to try new technology what happens with our data how will this make things better so like as you said like if it's a notice management system okay so any company would be receiving some kinds of notices these might be uh, some tax team or the tax department might be sending it or some consumer might be sending it might be government bodies these are like four five notices that we have received one month currently it is stored in some uh, some file or it is stored in uh, some documents that uh, some folder that we are not aware of but we are able to manage it once you have a notice management module where any notice that comes to you what you do simply you add this notice to the system okay and you say this is this is received on this day this is the date of the uh, reply and this is the document that was coming with it okay and uh, now it has to be replied before a particular date you reply and you put it in the system okay just make a small one line entry so that all your documents anything that is happening for that notice like whether this was received or not received whether this was replied or not replied 
that happens in a absolute like if somebody my senior comes with that notice was there what is the status of that one i don't have to like go looking for files under the table okay i just go to my system i open my app i am able to see like this is this notice sir you are talking about this is the status we have replied on this date and uh, we have also received a rejoinder and we are sending that uh, reply also or whether this notice got delivered or not got delivered. So very simple questions, but you can with this, uh, with a particular system in place, more than system or technology, but what this uh, management systems actually do is they give you a process on how to do things. Okay, so right now there might not be a process, with technology, there is a process that is already in place that your users know what to do when a notice is received, they put it in the system. Okay, so like this, you can just, once this happens, you can show it to the management, like this is what we were able to derive from a small module. What happens when we have a request management module? What happens when we able to integrate all our litigation into it? So you will be able to sell this better to the management or somebody who is not uh, completely sold on this. So that is the way to go. Just go on the low hanging fruits first and then slowly move your way to the higher ups. Okay, okay. Uh, Ashna, as I uh, use and a lot of other people use uh, Outlook to manage their day-to-day -day tasks. Okay. So is it possible to integrate uh, Outlook with these corporate legal tools? Uh, rather than integration, I would suggest is look for a tool which already has an inbuilt task management system. And if in case, you know, you want it to be in sync with your outlook, you can always, uh, you know, create your task, do the, uh, have a separate task management for your legal operations, and then sync it with your uh, outlook or Google calendars, right? That way you get the most of, uh, uh, best of both worlds. And when I talk about task management, that I think every company needs not only the legal operations but any uh, operation will require a task management system right and there is a backward integration possible where you can download this into your outlook if you're comfortable with outlook on the same email you are able to see that or you can use it like i use a google calendar where i can see like what my next hearing is what i have to do today all my tasks anything so that gets automatically synced with my uh, whichever tool that I'm using and it makes my life easier. So that is also there. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of our uh, social media posts that went out uh, to talk about this event on LinkedIn was, uh, it said that these tools help you make uh, informed choices. So what exactly do we mean Abhay when we say uh, these tools help us make informed choices? Right. And I am hoping it's a positive influence. Right. <laughs> so basically, uh, a lot of uh, legal corporate legal departments work is making uh, like advising people like saying like, this is what you should do. Okay. So either that advice comes from a place of gut, which is like, I have so much experience, I've seen so much of world. And this is what I think is right for you, which people will take. But there is another way to do it where you back your decisions with the data. Okay, you say ki because we have this tool, which uh, we tell us like we have in the last quarter, we have doubled our litigation so that I need somebody in the team that takes care of litigation. I, I need one more member to be there. Or like uh, these are the labor cases that have been going down. Okay, so we need to find out or this is the model of my car, which the most complaints are being received. Okay. So this is again going to present a data to me. And if I have a good tool, I'll be able to capture all these details and I'll be able to make sense of this also from here. So if I go back to my, say this one, say this is a visualization that, that is prepared out of the data that is available to us. So once I have the visualization to me, with me, I can see how many cases are there, what is the provisional amount, what is the amount deposited. So if I go with to my management with this kind of a data, I'll be able to see and I'll be able to make them more aware of the actual situation in hand. And uh, I in turn will be more confident of whatever I think that I, whatever agenda I might have for my own company, I'll be able to present it much more better. So uh, once you have the option, you can always listen to your gut also. I'm not against the gut. <laughs> but but uh, not it, just it, gut. <laughs> uh, you have to sometimes you have to trust your gut also. But it's 
cool to have a tool also or some kind of historical data also. And once you have these kind of tools, it also brings in a kind of institutional memory into your system. Okay, so I might leave with my gut and somebody else comes in and he does not have a gut. But you have some kind of information that he can play around. Like this is what uh, used to happen in the organization. This is what the trend says. So he'll be able also able to make a good uh, decisions. And similarly, you will empower your somebody who is working in the in your junior level or somebody who can, of course, uh, download reports for them. They can see for themselves what their dashboard says. So that also makes sense. And also adding to this, I think having such reports on a weekly or a monthly a monthly basis can help teams to a great extent because, you know, managers, they can present it in the board meetings. You can share these reports with managers. What is the, if for example, if I want to know for this particular case, what's the status? I get that in a click of a button uh, rather than, you know, looking at Excel, searching through case files, reading the order details. I know uh, to which court this is pending. What is the status? What is the value? What is the amount that is involved? And I so basically getting actionable insights and then hence making informed decisions. So I think that way it helps out uh, everyone. Absolutely. For somebody like me who is sort of a textually challenged, so visualization is a good way to <laughs> ingest data. Yeah. So it, it gives some weight to whatever you are saying that you have uh, data to show for it and it's not just as it does because you feel so. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Ashna, uh, uh, there's this person who's saying that uh, my company's cases are in many courts of India. However, most of these tools are in English, but the district courts especially pass uh, orders in any language like this, local languages, Marathi, Bangla, Hindi. So how do I manage these cases in uh, other languages uh, using a tool? And I think it's a very common problem that you may receive notices in regional languages, you may uh, receive it on hard paper, but you're already using a management tool. So how do you know manage it? Because it's supposed to save your time. Uh, but uh, having small difficulties in these you know, day to day business activities can increase time. So I would suggest uh, and you know, the option is you click a photo or a scan that document upload it on the tool, maybe if it's a, a regional thing, you may use third party tools to convert it and translate it and it will again increase your time so rather i would suggest go for a platform or look for a management tool that has these small tools already inbuilt that yes you can just click a photo convert it using an ocr technology make it editable translate it to uh you know the regional language that you want to or you want to uh, uh, do it vice versa and then immediately take action upon it you're saving time and you are uh, actually making your work more faster so having these small tools also handy can uh, help with uh, to a great extent absolutely just adding on to asna like if somebody has a again head office in chennai because i like chennai <laughs> and uh, somebody has sent them a mail or a notice from some other area and they are not aware of that language so they are not able to even frame what this notice actually says, what, what is the complaint all about? Mm -hmm. So having these tools in tune in your system, they can just put it for OCR, they can translate it into whichever language they want to. And then they can read and figure out like what actually needs to be done for this. So again, this is a very helpful tool. So these kind of tools might be like coming into use daily, if not daily, weekly, at least they'll, mm -hmm. uh, somebody will click on this. So to have it in one tool would be great, actually. Okay. Lovely. Uh, my next question is for you only, Abhay. Yeah. That even if I switch to a tool for my team, right. what happens to my existing documents in cases? For example, the company has been existing for like 50 years now and they take the tool today, but mm -hmm. they already have a bunch of documents in cases. So can mm -hmm. they all be brought on to this portal? Uh, right. That is a very necessary question to ask during a migration process. What we call this is an onboarding. And onboarding, there is a book also, Onboarding Matters. And it matters because like if any digital transformation you are talking about, if you don't have a migration plan already in place, there are 50% chances that it will fail, that it will not make the cut. Okay. So whenever you are making this kind of a digital translation, sorry, transformation, you have to be sure that like you have to sit with the team, how many documents or where are my documents currently? 
whether this is in a like a hard copy format or whether they are in somebody's laptop how do you access these documents or like some uh, like we said with different uh, legal team members what kind of reports do you want at the end of these things and if you are maintaining some kind of an excel what is the quality of the data that you have how much time this will going to take so migration is of course one of the key things that needs to be discussed on the table itself before signing that agreement before signing you have to sit with them and figure out like uh, this is the kind of work that we are looking into we are looking into 100% digitization of everything how we are going to do which person is going to come to me, how many team members are going to be there so this is something that you uh, the person might look into and absolutely focus on uh, migration part. and i think this becomes part of the customer uh, success and how well you support your customers in terms of implementation because it's not only just a tool but you have to make them comfortable with the tool right. and of course if everything is offline uh, and they're going for this transformation it's our responsibility actually to help them uh, have that transition very seamlessly done. absolutely to make it as she said plug and play we have to make sure that the historic thing is also there so it's uh, something that uh, the team onboarding team has to look into quite closely okay and uh, moving on mm -hmm. uh, the word that uh, has been thrown around in the past few months everywhere has finally come to this webinar also somebody i think this is a student yeah this is a student they've asked now that we have platforms like chart gpt how would they affect legal operation management i think uh, urushi uh, so many webinars that we have attended we've been audience to and i have in the last one month or two i haven't attended a webinar without a chat gpt question so that's the word of uh, at least this quarter i would say not sure what's happening next but uh, and i think there is uh, some more like worrisome or scared people out there who feel that you know this might take away their jobs how yes. will it affect me even if it's nowhere really related to your work but you know there is a mindset that has become but uh, uh, for legal operations per se i would 100% say that it has nothing to do or chat gpt can nothing affect uh, cannot affect it in any way if i'm looking at a legal operations management tool it it means you involve people you involve uh, their data you involve the management process to be done smoothly through coordination collaboration seamless migration process and uh, something like a chat gpt or an ai tool uh, can uh, it can help legal teams in drafting things in taking suggestions but when it comes to managing their uh, operations or their activities i don't think ai can uh, ever come into that or uh, uh, it can do single handedly something but not it cannot combine teams that yeah. way so as i like to uh, say that it can help you work better maybe yes. but it cannot do your work in any way yeah Right. So, uh, we have uh, reached the last of our question, but before that, I would like to uh, mention something that when we were going through the questions, we received a lot of questions regarding uh, contract lifecycle management, drafting, execution, uh, legal research, because it is ultimately uh, this uh, communication went out through Manupatra and then compliance management so for all the people that are here i would like to mention that uh, these three legal research compliance and contract are three very big individual chunks so if any of you will be interested we can definitely do a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a public session for these three individually uh, but uh, as of now uh, the, because it's not possible to cover all of these together so we can do them individually as of now this is for uh, how technology for uh, corporate legal teams works so to uh, sum up all of this Abhay, my last question to you is that if you could summarize that if i am looking to make or get a tool for my team then what are the things that i should be looking at that's a very uh, and this elephant looks like a trunk to me kind of a question so it will depend on different users depending on their requirements so if uh, the one thing that i'll suggest is introspect uh, a legal software might be looking like different to you, some other team say a bank professional might look <laughs> something very different in a legal uh, litigation management tool or say uh, a manufacturing industry might look uh, something different so uh, one thing is just 
see what your pain points are and what are the solutions that are available. Or, apart from that, there are like general principles that you should follow. Like it should be unified single platform where like all your people, all your communication, all your documents are basically in one place. So uh, like this uh, legal uh, tech world has in the last 10 years boom, where there are multiple small, small players that have crept up. Okay, so but... If you have five different websites or two different, three different apps to go to for everything that you need to do. So that's, that does not make sense. It does it, multiplicity. It has duplicacy of data. So creates a lot of problems. Have one place where everybody can go. They can communicate and everything can happen from the same channel. Uh, again, collaboration and communication, we're living in a world knowledge management age and these are knowledge workers at place. So there should be mechanisms where they are able to like that uh, water cooler exchange might not be happening in the post pandemic world, but that can happen through a document, through a WhatsApp, through a chat exchange, uh, through the portal itself, make it happen in the platform so they don't have to do it outside the platform. So that collaboration, communication, it's... Uh, lifeblood for any organization should not go integration if uh, there's litigation cases going on hands-on it should be connected to the course nobody should be able to manually put those details or orders upload it should not happen because that will again manual effort reach to errors and problems come up uh, again all your documents should be in one place no like three places all our documents uh, Whenever you need those documents, search options should be good. So in terms of whenever you're looking for something, it should not take you a millennium to find it. Just um, it, the search option is good. So you'll, you'll be able to do it. Data security, Ashna has emphasized enough. Just make sure that this particular part you get right. And most of all, for everything is to work, the last thing has to work, which is ease of use. It might be the best software in the world. It, it might have the best technology, but if it is not user friendly, then it is of no use. Okay, so just make sure that anything that you're uh, choosing, take a proper trial, you uh, see demos, ask questions, and then take it. Yeah. I think point being, if you're spending your money investing in something, it should have it all. Uh, right, it <laughs> should have it all actually. Yes. Nothing less will do. I think we have uh, covered everything as we, what we had in our list, all the questions that were sent. So the floor is open for questions now. If anybody has any questions after this session, so please go ahead. So it looks like or if somebody worry. has a question and they're more comfortable in the chat, like I am and like in these webinars, so they can just drop a question in the chat that will also do. Yeah. So we have a message from Game Lata. Hi. Yes. Uh, do you have a question, ma'am? Yes, yes. I'm just typing in the chat or I'll let you, I'll just ask is, sure. uh, in this uh, software, do you have any features for like, no, uh, putting up uh, the invoices and getting the details other than the litigation? Right. Uh, is there any other options available for in this uh, my case? So if yes, for document uh, management, expense management, I believe you ma'am is talking about. Right. Yeah. Uh, so ma'am, there is a variant for my case, which is for uh, basically for uh, lawyers. So in that one, there is a mechanism where you can store your invoices, where any invoices that you are creating, that can also happen. Your expenses, your time entry. So that, that will also be a part of the same. So if I go to invoice, I can see this is my invoice management, where I can also download the invoices. So all my invoices are getting generated in the same system. I can click on to this. I'll be able to see. So some of the templates are available with us. These are four or five quality templates that you can use from the day one. If you want your own template to be there, we can make those changes in our own system. So ma'am, this kind of a template you can manage. You can generate the invoice, how much amount is paid, how much is due. You can manage everything from here or you can send this invoice also to your client directly via mail from the same system, you will be able to track how much we have received, how much we have not received, that kind of thing also can generate. 
Okay, At, uh, once we save it, we will be able to look out of all this. Right. So, can we pull out the reports and all on this? After uh, all the invoices also, ma'am. There is a report section that can generate reports on expenses, on invoices, based on task. So whichever uh, template that you want, you will be able to generate how many invoices are pending in this month. For this client, how many invoices are pending. So all that can be done from the same. So will the, the, does this have a thing for engagement letters and uh, things or only for invoice uh, blocking? Ma'am, for engagement letter, you can use the document management portal that is already available. So you can create like if for a matter if any other documents are to be saved. So that can be done. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. If you need a demo for the this, uh, right. what is the process for it? Uh, we, we will uh, get in touch with you, ma'am. We will have your uh, details through the form and somebody, I will make sure that somebody from our team gets in touch with you on Monday. Is that fine? No problem. Okay. Right. Thank you for your questions, Yamla ma'am. Yeah. Does anybody have, else have any questions? Or were Abhay and Ashna very clear with their answers? I doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking at it positively. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Pratik Chatterjee. Thank you so much. Will the system fetch cause list? Yes, Abhay, this is a very uh, pertinent question from Madhu. She's mm -hmm. asking that if I have my litigation cases here, so can I get a cause list sort of it prepared? Uh, right. Very, very important for any legal person or who has like some even a lawyer as well as a corporate litigation team both wants it. So there is this feature which is called today's cause list where if I click on to this one, today being Saturday, I still have some district courts open where I can see the list of the matters that are um, that are listed for today. So from here, I can see judge name, item number, cause list. So these cause list option is available and this you can download. There is also a provision where we are sending the, this as an email also. So if somebody... Uh, for today, tomorrow is Sunday, but for Monday, I'll be getting this email at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Like this is the matters that are listed for tomorrow. So, so it gives my me personalized uh, cause list and not the generic cause list. That comes this will be a personalized cause okay. list for whatever matters you have stored in the system. It will generate like this is your matter in high court. This is the in district court. And these are the item numbers for these matters. So you can plan. Okay, with. okay great. So let's just wait for a couple of minutes if anybody else has any questions. Otherwise, we could totally wrap this up. Sure. So while we are waiting for a couple of minutes, I would like to mention that uh, if you would like to understand more about this or any of our other products, uh, Manupatri or uh, Manucomply, which is for compliance management or Manucontract, for uh, contract life cycle management, uh, then you can get in touch with us at uh, contact at manupatra.com. And now we have another question. Do you provide migration of our existing cases? Yes. Yes, sir. that uh, service is available with us. We have a migration team that will be onboarding all the different cases. Yeah, no matter how many existing cases you have, uh, they will be uh, shifted to this cloud. Okay. Does anybody else have any uh, questions or? So I think uh, we are done here and we can, you know, wrap this up. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thank you, Ashna and Abhay for your time.